What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you to another weekly update. It is November the 8th, and today, well, there's actually a lot going on. Um, things I don't want to touch on, obviously, but uh, there's a lot of channel-related stuff I do want to touch on, and also video game-related stuff, so I am actually going to make this a pretty meaty update. I don't know, it depends on how quickly I can get my thoughts across, but um, there's a lot to talk about. So I'm going to do that. Um, first things first, uh, Skyrim starts today. All right, you're getting the episode, and I would say, actually, considering when this update goes up, so four hours from now. Whenever I uplo uh, upload an update, I try to separate the day's video four hours apart rather than just two hours. So um, on Tuesdays, uh, Skyrim will be going up at four, but on Fridays, which is going to be its other upload date, it will be going up uh, at two as normal, uh, like any other episode. So... And it's probably still going to fill the Sunday slot. I haven't decided yet. But as of right now, it is going to be Tuesdays and Fridays, um, along with Call of Duty's Mondays and Thursdays. Wednesdays, I have another uh, something planned that I'm going to work on. Uh, Wednesdays is going to be kind of the free-for-all days. Um, and, I, and there's all sorts of kinds of videos I want to work on. Like, um, I do want to do some, go back to making some top 10, top 5 lists, whatnot. Uh, I think I'm going to really start getting back into that after making this year's top 10. Uh, if it's still going to be a top 10. It might be a top 20 like last year. I don't know. Um, but after I'm done with that, I'm going to probably try to get back into the swing of things and making a lot more of those. Not that they're going to be a regular thing, but I mean, maybe, you know, once every m a month or two. So, um, and then there's other videos I want to make. Like there's a couple analytical videos I want to make as well regarding um, games I like, games I dislike, and all sorts of little stuff. And I might try to make some humorous stuff too. I also want to, again, get into game reviews. I've talked about all this before, um, but it's really a matter of, you know, when I can. Because I'm not going to be able to cover as many new releases uh, in the coming years, so I won't be doing first impressions of those and whatnot. I will be doing reviews. Now, speaking of first impressions, um, that is going to be returning. That is going to be returning um, not this Saturday, but probably the next Saturday. I'm trying to give myself a few weeks of leeway before I jump right into it, just because I want to get far ahead. Like, when I say get far ahead, I mean, as of right now, Call of Duty 2 is completely recorded. Uh, Skyrim has 15 hours of footage pre-recorded before the first episode even goes live, and um, the next Let's Play is completely recorded. So I'm trying to give myself a lot of leeway before I jump into these because I really don't want to fall behind her. Uh, I want to get this schedule set in stone and keep that up for a while. Um, so yeah, and that next Let's Play, by the way, is going to be Fury. Um, that is going to start... I, I actually haven't decided yet. I'm thinking about actually starting it before Call of Duty 2 finishes, but I haven't completely decided yet. Um, if not, it's just going to replace the Call of Duty slot because it's only going to be, what, 10 episodes, 10, 10, 11 episodes? Um, probably not even that, actually, because some of the some of the boss fights in Fury are so short, and only a couple of them are so short that they don't even warrant an entire video. Um, but the rest do. Uh, so, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, so things I also want to talk about, uh, Overwatch content, I stopped the hero guides for a little bit, those will return eventually, just not right now, um, probably next year actually, I think is probably when I'll get back into them doing them again, maybe, maybe end of December, but more than likely next year, um, but I will be making those again, don't worry, and I might also be making revisionist guides as well, or at least recaps on old hero guides where I just for a couple minutes kind of go over the changes and the new strategies that apply to certain heroes. Like one of my guides that's already, I would say, out of date is my May guide. Because um, when I made that, it, the changes for her ultimate had just c come out. They'd only been out for like a week. Um, and now she's quite the meta hero. She's like She's a real uh, big part of the pro professional meta and used quite frequently now. So uh, there's a little bit of a, a few different strategies that are involved with using her and you know that's something I could always cover and then of course um, there's likely to be heroes that'll come back into the meta like you know there's always the possibility that Junkrat will. A lot of people are speculating he might with this new hero Sombra um, or Sombra excuse me. Um, there's a lot of people speculating that Junkrat might be kind of powerful because he'll be able to counter her invisibility extremely well um, and also the fact that his lane coverage will prevent her from being able to sneak around a lot of choke points. Um, 
So there's a possibility he could be strong again. We don't know yet. We're going to have to see how this all pans out. But that's as far as I'm probably going to go with that. There are a couple other things I might do. Like I might go over some games that I've played in competitive and kind of show uh, my strategies from like, you know, like how a game actually goes. Like I'll commentate over it and be like, this is... You know, this is what my thought process was here. This is how I compensated in this situation. This is what I messed up in this situation. And just going over certain things like that. I won't do that very often because I honestly find those videos, for the most part, a big waste of time. But um, I'll maybe do a couple. Just a few. Just to kind of go over, you know, map awareness and whatnot. Especially for a certain map. Uh, different matchups. And, and you can actually see it being played in-game. Uh, but... It, that's kind of all I have in the pipeline for Overwatch content at the moment. I, unfortunately, I don't quite have the equipment to make the Overwatch content I want to make here in the future, which is going to be a lot more high-end stuff. There's eventually going to be a series where I just straight up make like these full-length episodes covering each hero, covering their the way that they're played, covering their lore, uh, covering all sorts of stuff, and it's going to be a lot more high production, hopefully. So eventually I'll be able to get around to that, but uh, that's ways down the road like there's a lot of equipment i don't have for that at the moment but you know again assuming i'm still into overwatch at the at that point in time but you know regarding my love for the lore of this game i really doubt that that's gonna be a problem like i might play the game less but i'll always be there i think for a game like this like if you if you think you can test my faith just know that i've stuck around with destiny through three for three years well i guess at this point two and a half years and as much as crap as that game can be most of the time and as crap as it is at the moment <laughs> with some things that they're doing I've still stuck with that game so if I can stick with that I can stick with a much more well designed game like Overwatch pretty easily <laughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me coughing but anyway uh, that aside um, so the way that the schedule is looking at the moment is it is and I'll just kind of recap it is Monday Call of Duty Tuesday Skyrim Wednesday free for all it will basically be kind of whatever I can put out at the time. I might also move updates to that day just to kind of, uh, just to kind of fill, put more filler in the day it, just in case I don't have anything because there's always a possibility I won't on uh, Wednesdays because those are going to be always the most time-consuming videos to make. Um, and then Thursday is going to be more Call of Duty. Friday is going to be Skyrim again. Uh, Saturday is going to be First Impressions. And Sunday might also be Skyrim. I'm still deciding on what I want to fill that slot with. I might actually put Fury in that slot. We'll see. So that's what it's at the what it is at the moment. Um, and that aside, there is a couple things I wanted to talk about uh, that have just kind of been on my mind lately regarding video games that have actually been getting on my nerves. Uh, and you know, it's not a huge deal. I'm not going to get mad about this or anything. I just want to kind of discuss something. Um, I don't know, it's, it does peeve me a little bit, uh, because it's, it's unfortunate, is what it is, it's unfortunate. Um, I, and, you know, I, I definitely did get this idea from a video I watched today, which, um, if you don't know him, he's, Jim, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of him, Jim Sterling, he's, he does the Jim Acquisition, he talked about the possible failure of Titanfall 2, and I just kind of, I don't want to really go into that so much as I want to go over, uh, my disdain for Ubisoft and EA, and I, I again, I don't want to, uh, sit here and rant, because I don't, but, um, just kind of how annoyed I am with those companies and more specifically with the success of Battlefield 1 because for all intents and purposes you know being a somewhat of a history buff I'm not quite as much of a history buff as I used to be but I, I do know quite a fair share about how World War 1 World War 2 and the way it was implemented for all intents and purposes Battlefield 1 is an offensive piece of crap um, like a, like and I mean it when I say offensive it is an offensive piece of crap the gameplay may be fine but I despise that game purely based on its com its heinous inaccuracies because of the fact that World War One is kind of an, this untapped well of heroism that gaming has never really brought to us. Uh, there is this other game that came out this year called Verdun, which did, but it's not near as high budget and it's uh, it's a lot more clunky, but it's a lot more accurate as to what World War One is supposed to be. Um, Battlefield 1, it just pains me to know that this is going to be the exposure that most people are getting for World War 1 because it's so, so far from the truth. It is actually, I would say, Battlefield 1 is a World War 2 game. They're just saying that it's set in the 19, 
it's in the 1910s and also using weapons from World War One because it's not World War One. It really isn't. The singularities that are used in that game, the there, there's just there's so many historical inaccuracies, just all this kind of stuff. That game annoys me. It annoys me greatly. And I also don't really care for the battlefield formula, but that's a personal thing. Obviously, it's not an objective thing in any way, shape, or form. Um, but the thing that annoys me the most about that game, aside from it being an offensive piece of crap, is that it overshadowed this game that just came out called Titanfall 2. Now, to be fair, it wasn't the only game that overshadowed Titanfall 2. Uh, Skyrim totally did. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare totally did, uh, even though it came later. But, I mean, most gamers that are into Battlefield or Call of Duty were saving their money for those two games and were completely overlooking Titanfall altogether. Um, and then also FIFA, which is another EA game, over was completely overshadowing Titanfall 2. Now, out of the bunch, out of all five of those games, I would have to say from an objective standpoint, based on the reviews I've seen, based on the impressions I've, I've gotten from the game personally, based on really the general consensus, out of those five games, Titanfall 2 is the best. Now, me being the person, uh, being who I am, would by and far say Skyrim's the best out of this. I love Skyrim, uh, personally. But it is a five-year-old game. It is just an, essentially a remaster of a five-year-old game. Titanfall 2 is a fantastic game fantastic first-person shooter. It has, well, albeit a, sh a sort of short campaign, I mean, that criticism I kind of find null because I've never really played a military shooter that's had a lengthy campaign. Um, I mean, that's not true. There's one I've played that comes to mind, but it's a really obscure game and it's not really all that good of a game either. But for the most part, there's never been a first-person shooter with a lengthy campaign. Like, Medal of Honor and Call of Duty were the closest it came to lengthy, but even those were like eight hours tops. Um, this, it's not very lengthy, but apparently it's an extremely, extremely well done, well story told, good world building, good character driven, awesome mechanically driven campaign. And that's not to say, that's completely aside from the multiplayer, which people are, you know, hit and miss on, of course, but it's, it's very solid. I, it's, I think it is in every way better than a game like Call of Duty because it has all of the same ground aspects of that make Call of Duty great without all of the bullcrap that makes Call of Duty suck. And it also has freaking mechs, which is so cool. I mean, as much as I'm not a fan of mech gameplay, it's still awesome. So, that game is getting completely overshadowed, and it is the biggest shame right now. Like, it is the biggest shame. Now, I think it's kind of been a problem all year because, th let's be, let's face it, 2016 has been so, so oversaturated. Like, my goodness, the, a number of amazing games that have come out this year would make anybody poor if they were to buy into half of them. I've bought into half of them and I'm poor. <laughs> and I'm not even done. November's got Watch Dogs 2, which I'm not going to buy. It's got Final Fantasy 15. It's got Pokemon Sun and Moon still. I mean, it's got all these great games. There's more to come to. Dishonored 2. That's right. Dishonored 2 is also this month. And then in December, there's The Last Guardian, which I'm buying the collector's edition for. I mean, it's like... 2016's been insane. In three, four months, it's mo for the most part surpassed almost any year we've had in like the last six, seven years. It's been ridiculous. Yes, I would say even more than 2013. It's done what 2013 has done the ent that entire year in like the span of three, four months. It's been insane. And it's also not been good because so many of these wonderful games that have been slated for this year have come out and have just been bombarded by games that have just a little bit more marketing. They, they're good games in their own right too, but they have that extra marketing. They have that extra budget put behind them. And so they overshadow all of these great games that, you know, don't have that. And it's kind of broken my heart, actually, because it makes me worry that 2017, 2018, uh, all, these, all these other devs, and it's not to say that Respawn Entertainment is a small dev. They're not. They're under EA. They're one of their biggest developers. Titanfall is kind of a big IP because, I mean, the first one was one of the best-selling games of the year it came out, despite being an exclusive. That's kind of a huge deal. Um, it's They're not a small deal of a studio, but they got completely overshadowed. And if they, they can get overshadowed, imagine what's happening to the indie games out there. I mean, really, the only indie game I saw this year, or the, I guess the only two that I saw this year that broke through the spotlight were Inside and Firewatch. Um... 
Which, don't get me wrong, they're both fantastic games. But there were also so many other fantastic games that came out this year that didn't get near the same hype that those two games got and didn't get near the same exposure. I mean, Firewatch did release at a timely moment. There wasn't really a lot going on in February. There was Far Cry Primal, which was a flop, but not really anything else. Inside had the advantage of being the sequel, or I guess the next game from one of the freaking biggest uh, games of all time. Even The Witness is kind of fallen off the face of the earth. And that's from one of the biggest indie devs in the world. I mean, it was huge when it came out, sure, but again, it was by itself, and then everyone forgot about it. No one talks about The Witness anymore. There was supposed to be a physical release? Where? I don't hear about it. I've heard nothing about The Witness anymore, aside from the fact that it came to Xbox One recently. It's just... Uh, it's so depressing. It really is. I just... I I guess all I want to say is I implore you to please check out and be a little bit more investigative with the games that you're looking for because there has been so much good stuff. And... I mean, again... I'm, I'm, I can't, I'm not even trying to say this from a subjective standpoint. If I was to say so much good stuff, I technically, personally, would not be counting Battlefield 1, Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, Watch Dogs 2, Dishonored 2, Final Fantasy 15, but that's subjective, okay? Objectively, all of those are a huge deal, all right? All of those. And those are just a speck in the release, li uh, release library we've gotten for 2016. And 2017, so far, is already starting to do just the same. PlayStation Experience is coming up soon. The Game Awards are coming up soon. Those will both have a bunch of new releases and new announcements coming there. Um, and then, of course, next year's E3, which will cover the whole second half of the year. And from that point on, I mean, it's getting, it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. The market's getting oversaturated with good stuff. And that sounds awesome. It really is. But my fear is that so many of these good developers are going to get pushed down by so many of these, uh, I guess, higher-end developers that aren't necessarily good. There is no way in that hell I would ever call EA or, or Ubisoft good publishers. No more of the a lot of their uh, a lot of their first-party devs. I would call the, I wouldn't call those good either. But I don't want them buried by that. I don't want good companies like Giant Squid, who made Obzu this year, getting buried. I don't want the game bakers who made Fury to get buried, okay? I don't I don't want I don't want that. I don't want to see that happen to these wonderful wonderful games that we've been graced with this year. And I don't want, it it's it's just it's happening too much and now it's even happening to the big big boys because the bigger boys are getting are overshadowing them. Ugh. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. I actually had a lot more material than I thought I did, but goodness. It's uh it's just something I wanted to touch on because I think we should acknowledge that. And for that reason alone, I'm going to get Titanfall 2 very, very soon because that game, it actually looks awesome. And I'm not, I hated the first Titanfall. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching this weekly update. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much. And I will see you all in the next one.